If you rotate the minute hand of a clock 144 degrees counterclockwise from a starting position of 1 p.m., what's the new time? Okay, so this is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then, of course, we'll walk through this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just like this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so just a quick review on basic old school clock reading. So here is a lovely clock, right? So it starts at 12, we got one, two, three, four. Now we don't really know if it's AM or PM, but what we need to be aware of is that the small little hand down here of this clock is pointing to the hour, right? And then the bigger hand is pointing to the minutes and the big hand of a clock is gonna go around the clock every 60 minutes, every hour, right? It's gonna rotate around every hour. And then of course, that's going to move the little hand of the clock from a, a, a one hour, right? So it's gonna go from one to two to three, etc., cetera, et cetera. All right, now most of you out there probably already know this and don't need much more instruction on clock reading other than uh, this quick review, but we're interested in the minute hand. So the problem is it is 1 p.m. So that means that the little ha hour hand is pointing at one and the minute hand is pointing right there. Now we need to understand these terms uh, counterclockwise. And if we're going to talk about counterclockwise, well, we need to understand clockwise. All right, now what does clockwise mean? Well, it probably means the direction that a clock turns. So clocks turn this way, right? It kind of, they turn to the right like so, but we, won't, we don't say it, uh, uh, the hands of a clock turn to the right, we say clockwise, right? So when you are indicating clockwise movement, you're going in this direction. And this is important, not just only for um, clock reading, but in geometry and trigonometry, these terms are used. So what do you think counterclockwise means? Well, if you said, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, probably means uh, go, you're going this way. Uh, you're absolutely right. It's going opposite the, uh, the way a clock rotates. So this is counterclockwise and this is clockwise movement. Now, what we're being told here is that the, uh, the clock at 1 p.m., okay, is going to rotate. We're gonna rotate this minute hand uh, 144 degrees this direction counterclockwise. So obviously we're gonna end up with a new time. What time is it? So that is the full problem. And hopefully uh, you understand, you know, kind of how to solve this, but really what's required because we are talking about degrees, we need to kind of do a quick review about circles and degrees. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so um, a real fast review, because probably most of you know this as well, but if you don't understand uh, the amount of degrees that are in a circle, well, you're gonna have a tough time figuring this problem out. All right, so the very top of the clock up here would be our starting point, uh, which would be zero degrees, but we're gonna go from zero degrees and we're going to do a full lap around the circle, which of course is 360 degrees. So if you go a quarter of the uh, way around a circle, one fourth of 360 degrees, well, you're going to go 90 degrees. If you go halfway around a circle, okay, which of course is a clock as well, right? Uh, we're talking about a circular clock face. We, you've uh, traveled uh, 180 degrees. Now, if you go three-fourths around a clock or a circle, uh, you've gone 270 degrees, and then, of course, if you do one full lap around a circle, you've gone 360 degrees. Okay, so just a quick review of um, you know circles and degree measure, because we're going to need to understand this as our little minute hand is going to rotate 144 degrees, right? It's gonna uh, rotate 144 degrees counter clockwise. Okay, now uh, that's not going to really help us in terms of the number of degrees. We need to translate these uh, degrees into minutes, right? So we can see that 15 minutes of time, okay, is, well, well not 15 degrees, 15 minutes of time is equal to 90 degrees, right? So we can see that on our clock, 
180 degrees is equal to what? Well, that's 30 minutes. So this is how we need to be thinking about how to figure out how many, how much time, how many minutes is 144 degrees uh, worth, right? So if that's what you're thinking, well, you are thinking right. So let's go ahead and kind of develop this, right? So we need to figure out 144 degrees is how many minutes because we can't figure out the uh, answer to this problem until we figure this part out. All right, so as I indicated, um, halfway around the circle is 180 degrees. So that would be halfway around, and we're talking about the minute hand, right? So that would be 30 minutes because the minute hand on a clock rotates every uh, 60 minutes in one hour. Okay, so 180 degrees on that minute hand uh, equates to 30 minutes. 270 degrees equates to um, 45 minutes, right? So that's three-fourths around 60 minutes. So hopefully this makes sense. So how are we going to figure out what 144 degrees uh, is? How many minutes? Because these are pretty obvious examples. Well, the way we're going to do, uh, do that is the following. All right, so the math here, and let's use 180 degrees. What you're really doing, we kind of see this on our clock, but we are building a fraction. So in other words, what fraction, how much is 180 degrees out of 360? So let's just compare the two as a fraction. So 180 over 360, we can reduce this. This is the fraction 1 half. So 180 degrees is 1 half of a full rotation on a circle, okay? So, or 1 half of an hour. Now, we're not interested in a hour. We are interested in minutes, right? So uh, min uh, an hour is 60 minutes. So 1 half of 60 minutes is 30 minutes. Okay, so... When you don't know the procedure on how to do something, always use a simple little example just to kind of look at the math. Be like, okay, I know 180 degrees is uh, equivalent to 30 minutes, and you kind of run through the math and be like, okay, now I know what to do to figure out what 144 degrees is, right? So 144 degrees in terms of minutes, well, we're going to compare this to 360 as well. Now, this is a nice little fraction that you can reduce to two-fifths, or you could just use your calculator and take that 144 divided by 360, you're gonna end up with 0.4. Okay, so what do we do with this 0.4? Well, it's 0.4 uh, around the circle, okay? Or that's how many minutes. So just like we did over here, we took our one half and we multiplied by 60 minutes. So let's take our 0.4 and multiply it by 60 minutes. So two fifths of 60 minutes or 0.4 of 60 minutes, just do a simple multiplication here is 24 minutes. Okay, so now we're getting someplace. So 144 degrees is 24 minutes. And now we're gonna rotate that minute hand 24 minutes this way, counterclockwise. All right, so here is the situation. So we're starting at 1 p.m. and we're going to rotate that minute hand 24 minutes counterclockwise. What is the new time? All right, now hopefully most of you can probably do this in your head. But uh, if you can't, well, we can do a little bit of uh, clock math here. As a matter of fact, we'll do this in just one second. But first, uh, I need you to quickly hit that subscribe button. Um, I definitely need your help to uh, continue to grow my YouTube channel. Now, I make these YouTube videos uh, with um, the idea that people are going to watch them, right? <laughs> you know, and you can never tell on, uh, for those of you out there that have no experience, uh, you know, posting YouTube videos, um, if you... All right. I would say this much. If you have the slightest interest in building your own YouTube channel, I would totally encourage you, encourage you to do so in whatever field you know best. And we all know something really well. So for me, obviously, it's math. But sometimes you just don't know whether your video is going to get, you know, thousands of views, maybe uh, uh, 10,000 views, maybe 3,000 views, or maybe even 3 million views. And I've had, matter of fact, I've had videos to get like uh, close to 8 million views. Uh, you just don't know. So for me, I don't really think about that. What I try to do is like, how can I deliver some sort of value to the person that's watching this video? So every video, I really try to do my best, but I need your support in order to continue to reach as many people as I possibly can. So the best way to support this channel is to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and think about this clock math. Right? Clock math excuse me. Boy, I said that too fast. All right, so we're at 1 uh, one o'clock 
uh, 1 p.m. or 1 a.m. It doesn't make a difference because uh, the hands of the clock are going to be the same position. So this is 1 p.m. Now we're going to need to subtract away 24 minutes, right? So we're going to back up time. Okay, so if it's 1 p.m. right now, we want to know what time it was 24 minutes prior, right? So, uh, so how do we figure this out? Well, we're going to subtract away 24 minutes from one hour. This is hours, and this is minutes, okay? All right, so uh, a lot of you out there, including myself, probably forgot clock math. This is stuff that you were doing in the uh, first, second, third grade, whatever the case might be. It was a long time ago. But uh, so we have to subtract away 24 minutes. So how can we do this? Well, um, the easiest way to approach this, a lot of you already got this figured out, but let's kind of break it down step by step, is the following. Okay, so we can't take uh, 24 away from two zeros. So 1 p.m. or 1 a.m. is the same thing as 12 hours and 60 minutes. Okay, now we have some minutes right over here, right? So 12 hours and 60 minutes is the same thing as uh, 1, uh, 1 o'clock, 1 p.m. or 1 a.m. So now we have some minutes, and I can subtract away 24 from these minutes. So 12 hours and 60 minutes, if I subtract away the 24, I have 12, 36, right? 60 minus 24 is 36. And of course, uh, the question said the clock was at uh, 1 p.m. So 12, 36 p.m., we're still in the afternoon. So in this case, you do want to put that little p.m. there. But this is how you solve this problem. All right, now hopefully this wasn't too complex, and uh, don't feel bad about you know any aspect of this problem that you know, especially the clock uh, reading uh, business. I mean, uh, you know, if you don't do something now for me, I like looking at old school clocks. I'm just kind of an old school type of person, but I look at digital clocks on my phone as well. But uh, if you're a younger person, you're like, yeah, boy, I don't really understand clocks. Well, you know what? Uh, you don't feel bad. You know, you just probably didn't learn it and. So you're certainly not looking at these clocks as frequently as we did way back in the good old days. But the whole idea here is to be able to use some common sense and really break down, you know, solving a problem in its component parts. Okay, that's what solving any math word problem is about. Now, if you need help in mathematics, I'm going to encourage you to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to all of those in the description below. But uh, if you are not a student and you want to relearn uh, basic math. Uh, I got two great options for you. First is my math foundations course. Course, excuse me. This is just all basic arithmetic, all this stuff like place value percent, fractions, decimals. Uh, but if you want to take it beyond this, then check out my math skills rebuilder course. In this course, I teach you basic math, but I also teach you a lot of algebra, geometry, even some basic trigonometry and some probability and statistics as well. And all my courses are self-paced, so easy to learn from indeed. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.